Heartless Hearts estate agents ripping off student tenants. Hi, I'm Yasmin Chowdhury, and this video is being made for Hearts, Spicer Hearts specifically, and for their chief executive. Now, I'm about to present to you evidence of how young female students renting for the first time were exploited, taken advantage of, harassed, and put into signing a one-year lease, AST, during the first ever lockdown and the filthy conditions. So, before I present the evidence, I also want you to know that this is the state of the property even after the girls entered it, all of which, many of which, was missed by their inventory clerk. To this date, we've not had a copy of the inventory report and the obfuscation and also the attempts by Hearts agents, even at the most senior level, right from their branch manager, area manager, to their customer relations manager, I'm asking the CEO of Hearts, do you think this is acceptable? Because I don't. So I'm going to hand it over and now look at the array of disgusting evidence. And we are now, on behalf of the students, I, Yasmin Chowdhury, am seeking damages because what you did to them is disgusting. And if there's any other British students out there who were fleeced by British estate agents, please get in touch. Just take a look at this. Look at that, a dressing gown being used. They apparently couldn't put in blinds or curtains that covered all the light streaming in. And this is a house with three female students vulnerable. I forgot to add, broken bed slats, bed corner collapsed. Let's start taking a closer look at Spicer Heart and its senior management team because ultimately the buck stops with them. First up, let's take a closer look at their lettings director, Sat Bassi. I was assured in a phone call that he undertakes very thorough investigations, but I don't feel this is the case given it's been redirected to the property ombudsman. Does he know what's going on? Have no idea. We have asked the question. But look, there in the senior management team section is also Emma Barber. Her and another colleague of hers are responsible for learning and development because often when things go wrong, it's the training. So Emma Barber... Belinda Jaman as well is responsible for training and development and the rest of the team. Now, John Spencer, he's non-executive, but here is all the others heading up the divisions within the senior management team. And while I have no particular, any individual blame, but I am asking each of them to take the responsibility of helping to resolve this dispute. But then I went digging in company's house and there you'll see I'm looking at the people, the directors ultimately responsible. And this is a quick flick through of all the various, I think they have about 17 officers registered. And the next thing I wanted to do is go and scrutinise their accounts and see how much money are they making. Now, the most recent accounts are about to be published, but I went digging back into the 2019 and that paints quite a picture because they've obviously got enough money to hire KPMG and they are obviously signing off there's uh one of the directors and i wanted to take a closer look and show you that they are or were getting income that runs into millions of pounds and this is the problem we have in 2021 where organizations limited companies such as spicer hearts have the ability to charge rent for filthy, horrific properties that they let out in 2020, way before the um, lockdown, um, but during the pandemic, because I guess if we go having a look now, you will see that they have themselves, towards the end of 2019, explained that they were heading 
for some kind of problem with regards to their company finances. And I think that if you quickly go and have a look at some of the websites aggregating information on Spicer Hearts, you'll see that the estate agency sector is extremely competitive, even more so in 2020 to 2021 because of the pandemic. And I'm sitting here wondering why have they gone to such a length? And here is a statement from one of the co-tenants who talks about the fact that she received lots of phone calls and the idea that her credit score would be damaged because one of the tenants hadn't paid. And now for a closer look. Some TikTok videos that were sent to Hearts Guildford Estate Agency and despite receiving them and seeing the evidence of the horror, the filth, the non-stop failures, they have announced that there was nothing done wrong and that they stand by the property. Evidence Hearts Estate yeah. Agents oh, ripped oh, off yeah. vulnerable first-time young female students into unfit it's property dusty. during Dirty lockdown. Rusty fridge. Number protector no, students. No they paid £1.8,000 a month for two bedroom non-London property with living room tuned into third bedroom. Now for more evidence of how Hearts Estate Agents exploited first-time student renters during first lockdown in Spring 2020. Stiff taps. Broken bath. No hot water. Outdated hot water. Boiler hisses 24 by 7. Huge clunky furniture crammed in as dining room. No living room existed for the students so they used their bedrooms for socializing. Cracked front door frame. Damp in the hallway. Dangerous loose. Electricity cables and wiring. Yes, that is the rumbling oven in the background. Dirty, filthy, moldy. Rusty fridge often. Contaminated students. Food, crockery, utensils and kitchen air. Three isolated girls during lockdown opening front door to random strangers knocking. Reminder, no doorbell. Sarah Everard got killed simply for walking home. Rumbling oven. Hisses cold air. During winter. Kitchen quickly. Became cold. One gas burner. Does not work. Dirty crevices and black mold in shower walls. This flimsy shower was leaking, which later had to get repaired when girls reported it. Yup. Boiler hissing. Damp and black. Mold in bathroom. Hearts letting. Board still there. Cracks in windowsill. Allowing in down. No spyglass or handle fixtures on front door either. Can you imagine someone elderly, vulnerable, disabled living here? Exterior light. Does not work. Now for a closer scrutiny of each room and area. The bedroom. For a start, here's the semen and urine stained mattress, which upon check-in back in September 2020, the tenants, young, female, vulnerable students, renting during a lockdown that had just halted, I believe, discovered this in one of the bedrooms downstairs, which 
had been, I believe, a lounge, but faced the main street. It's disgusting. You also see here that this bedroom, which faces the pavement, the street, and the student, a young female, was undressing, asked for curtains, but was told no. Apparently, the structure does not enable for curtains, which is a lie. It's a blatant lie. So she ended up using her dressing gown, okay? Because you can see people approaching and looking in. So what on earth Hertz was doing, Hart, sorry, in letting this room out to young three students is, is, is shocking. The noisy, mouldy, horrific bathroom. Let's take a look at the mould. This is how the property was found and a reminder that the girls were paying 1,800 per calendar month plus bills. It was dirty, it was stained and none of this was picked up by their inventory clerk who I believe was paid fees who then did a report but did not capture any of this. How this inventory clerk who should be named and shamed, which we will do, here enabled this property to be let out is shocking. We also have a very ancient boiler that made hissing noises. As you can see, the tap, hot water tap, does not work at all. So, um, and they're very stiff as well, which made actually using the bathroom nigh on impossible. It's unbelievable. Next, let's look at the front door. No doorbell, no fixings whatsoever. Why they would do this, knowing that they're putting in young female students and despite Sarah Everard's murder, which happened earlier this year, it is shocking that they did not take even a another attempt to say, let's try and sort this out. You'll see that the outside lamp doesn't work at all and... There's no fixings, there's no handle, there's no nothing, okay? So that is just really worrying when receiving unexpected visitors. As anyone knows, with safety for women, especially in university uh, cities, um, it's, it's, it's definitely important. The girls need to know who's at their door. Next, let's look at the stinking damp. Look at that. How they're charging 1800 It's clear that they saw the three students and decided that they would get vulnerable first-time renters to take this disgusting, filthy property. Now, let's take a look at the kitchen. Here we have rust. It's absolutely mouldy. It's disgusting. It's filthy. Do they not understand that fungus and mould has actually spread? and is actually not good as a health and safety. But despite all of this being raised, and this is how it was found on the day of check-in, Hearts refused to do anything about it. They just ignored and took all the money greedily. And a reminder that the girls continued to pay, except for one who had the downstairs dodgy bedroom, living room turned bedroom with no curtains, stopped paying her deposit after asking and asking. Now to the gas burner. You'll notice that one of them doesn't even work. So we've got three working. But look. It doesn't work. Then we have the dining room. A reminder that the girls had no space to socialise. There was the kitchen and immediately came into this dining room crammed with this massive antique furniture. It's bizarre. It's bizarre. I don't understand why they would have done this to young female students. Now let's take a look at Chase Inventory Services. This is the professional inventory firm that is paid by Hearts to take a record of a property before tenants check in and then when they check out none of which they did accurately. They also failed to send a copy of the inventory report with the amendments because the tenants sent all of the issues 
But again, none of this was, we believe, recorded. And I really hope that Chase Inventory, as you watch this, you will also be asked to provide damages and also to assist in resolving this dispute. Who am I? I'm Yasmin Chowdhury. Here I am on the right with my daughter, Amber, on the left. Amber and two other of her student friends who had been going to University of Surrey decided to rent a property for the first time ever. And in doing so, they chose Hearts. But what is odd is that Hearts got them to sign into a one-year contract back in May 2020 even though it was months away and it was the pandemic and it was horrific because Amber couldn't go and visit the property. They were really stressed and they felt pressurised. I now want to say that Hearts had a duty of care. That's right, Hearts, because you would have known that young people during the pandemic don't have the help that they need. And I really hope that as professionals, we do more to help them but I'm annoyed and upset because I'm the chief executive of Love Desh and I've been so busy myself trying to help others because we're on a mission to protect people and planet and we are the world's first ethical luxury designer brand. And one of the reasons why I've stepped in because my daughter works so hard and with me is seen traveling to many of those who are talented but poor destitute working with them to give them jobs, boost their incomes. All of the time I've been spending could have been spent time on my own business and, as you can see, the international development work that I do. And also, I work with very, very talented weavers and many others who are just looking for a break to boost their income. Here I am with garment workers in Bangladesh, as is Amber. She's looking slightly miserable there because she's very sick and ill. And I recall that she'd flown out in October 2019 to help. But who are we also helping? Here's Rana Plaza. In 2013, did you know a factory collapsed, killing 1,136 garment workers, some as young as 13? Yes, their bodies have never been recovered. And here you can see the amount of garment workers returning to work. But back to 2013, mothers, sisters, daughters, so many lost People who died because a factory collapsed on them while they were stitching fast fashion. Yes, Hearts, this is the kind of project I'm working on. But instead, what did you choose to do? You are so busy lining your own pockets with money. It was disgusting and a disgrace. Look at the faces of these relatives. Some are survivors of the Rana Plaza factory collapse who I've been collaborating with for years and why I do feel it's correct and it has merit to call you heartless hearts because we have been working so hard to help individuals overcome poverty. Some who are elderly, disabled, have got nothing going on but clinging on to survival. But instead, I've been busy with hearts. And now I want to leave you with Alom. There he is staring at his dead wife. That's right, she left a son very young as a toddler and that's him and her on their wedding day. Yes, heartless hearts. Show some heart.